Hello and welcome to the 10th day of the 12 DIYs of Christmas. I'm Katherine Harris and today I wanted to share with you a tree skirt that I made from an upcycled vintage lace tablecloth as well as some burlap and some canvas. I always love when I can do something that's a little bit eco-friendly and saves the earth a little bit. And this tree skirt is a little bit smaller than a traditional one, which is absolutely perfect for the smaller pencil trees that are really in right now and works perfectly in my kitchen tree because the one I made before was just a little too big for my liking. So let's get to it. Cutting the base here and we want to do an 18 inch radius on that. So I'm taking the folded edge of my broadcloth and I am tracing out 18 inches all the way around to create a circle that is, has an 18 inch radius and then I'm folding it in half and in half again so it's in quarters and trimming away the excess so I have a perfect circle. Next I'm going to measure two inches on the end and I'm going to cut that out leaving a four inch round opening in the middle and 18 inch radius down the base of the tree skirt. So next we're going to get out our burlap and some pins and we're going to pin the burlap to the base of the tree skirt and we're going to line it up with the very bottom edge so you don't want it to overlap and you also don't want too much of the white to show you want it to just kiss the edge and then I'm going to be forming some pleats and I'm just doing that freehand I think that it looks a little nicer when I can eyeball how things are going on that and it doesn't need to be so perfect and precise with those pleats I think that's what gives it a a little extra character and so I'm just continuing to do that and just pinning on the pleats so now we're going to take it over to our sewing machine and we're going to get that stitched along the top of our burlap so make sure to backstitch both at the front and the end of your stitching and just push the pleats in place to make sure they lie nice and flat so once that's all done this is what it's going to look like and this is what the back is going to look like and so now we are going to use our thrifted vintage lace tablecloth and you can use whatever you have on hand. So what I did is I decided to fold it in half to give it a little bit more loft with it and I like the way that it looked a little better. And then I'm going to pin the end and I'm going to overlap that just slightly and I'm eyeballing this right now. Later what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure to make sure that I've got it even across the entire one but for right now we just eyeball it and then I'm putting in some pleats. And so because this has a scallop in it I'm actually forming the pleats in the middle of each of the scallops because I want to maintain those nice little scallops going along the edges. And so right here you can see I'm just pinching in the center and keeping that scallop because if I were to randomly place the pleats it wouldn't look as good because this does have a very geometric pattern. So right here you're just seeing how I am measuring it the distance from the top um, based on where I had eyeballed it before to make sure that it's consistent. We're going to stitch it the same as we did our burlap and then we are going to put another layer of burlap. And so for this, we're going to do it the exact same way that we did it for the other layer. Um, we're just going to eyeball where it looks nicest and then eyeballing all of those pleats that go into it. And I like to pin every pleat and got that nice and stitched and it's really starting to come together. Now for the canvas. So I like this neutral rustic texture of the canvas much more than say the broadcloth. Uh, it gives more of an interesting feel to it. So here I'm trying to decide what I want to do. Do I want to fold it over to give it a bit more loft or do I want to pull the edges under? And I think that I'm going to roll the edges under on this one. And so I am marking this. This is a six inch 
one. And so I'm just using my rotary cutter to cut the width of my canvas to six inches. And then I'm pressing under a scant five eighths of an inch or whatever you like to use for your traditional seam allowance there. So once I've got that pressed, I am going to pin it just to secure that in place. And then I'm gonna stitch along the top here. And I'm stitching close to the outer edge and just going along with our machine and just do that for the entire length that you're going to need. And then I am pleating it just as we did before. Now in terms of the length that we're going to need for each of these, I just sewed together strip sets and I didn't actually measure it. So when I do make a second one, what I'll do is I'll update the description down below to let you know some of the lengths and measurements that you're going to need. But anyways, you're going to stitch that in place so now we are getting close to the top. And so here I thought I'd do another layer of burlap. And so we are going to pleat this just as we did before, but because it is so close to the edge, you're going to have to really manipulate that fabric a little more than you did before and almost doing like triangle like pleats where some of them are on an angle as opposed to knife pleats where they're completely straight. But just do that all around the edge and this is what it looks like. Next, you're going to cut three pieces of ribbon about 13 inches long for the ties that we're going to use for the closure. And then we're going to roll that over two times and then stitch right down the edge so that you don't have any open ends showing on your ribbon. Put those aside for later. Now we gotta deal with the rest of this tree skirt and we want to enclose some of these ends in here. So flip it upside down, make sure you pin it and then stitch along the edge of your underskirting, but leave about two inches gap on the end. So don't go right to the bottom. Now next, that is really messy and we need to clean that up and make it look nice and beautiful, especially for the coming steps. So trim that off. Make sure you do that to both sides. Now we're going to put on our ribbon ties. So I'm putting my ribbon ties on about one and a half inches down from the top and then I'll go down about four inches from there and then I go down about five inches from there. And so it's just kind of staggered and it actually ends up working out where it's kind of in the middle of the burlap layers. Now I decided to use bur or to use canvas for the bottom of the tree skirt for the lining. It has a nice heavy weight to it and this is a heavy tree skirt. You don't want to use a broadcloth. It is not going to lay the same at all. So cut that out the exact same with the four inch circle in the middle and the 18 inch radius along the edges and then place it right sides together and start pinning all the way around the tree skirt. And so you're going to pin every section, even the interior circle, but do not stitch on the inside circle. Now, when you're pinning right here, especially when you have the sides, just be careful not to get to the ribbon. And here you see, I'm folding away the burlap on the bottom because we do not want to catch that in. That's why we left the two inches out before. And then poke that burlap down so we don't catch it. And so you will notice that I did cut this one a little bit larger. I wasn't sure if there was going to be any shrinkage when I was doing it. So I did cut it at 19 inches instead of the 18, but you can get away with doing 18. And then just fold under the burlap so that you're not catching anything as you stitch all the way around. So take that over to your machine and let's get that stitched. So now that it's all stitched, I'm just going to trim away my extra fabric here because I did make mine a little bigger and trim your corners. Now comes the fun part. We get to birth our tree skirt and it's a nice big opening. You've got that four inch circle there. Pull it all out, push out all of the corners. And now I am pinning down the middle. So around that four inch circle in the middle, we are going to pin that down and we're going to stitch all those layers together. Next, I'm measuring out three inches for the binding and then I'm folding it in half and pressing it. 
So there it is pressed and then we're going to attach it to the top. So you can see it's attached to the top and if you can see on the right hand corner, I know it's a very light fabric, but I did fold over the corner just a bit and I'm going to do that all the way around. And so you can see the folded corner a, a bit better on this right here so that when I do fold it over, all of the edges are enclosed. Now you need to be very careful and use a strong needle and have a strong sewing machine because you're going through six layers of fabric and some of those are canvas and burlap. So your needle's going to be a bit fussy, but if you have a good sewing machine and a decent heavy duty needle, it will work just fine. And so now that that is all done and stitched in place and top stitched, we are done our tree skirt and all that's left to do is to tie up the back with some pretty bows and of course, put it on your tree. I had a lot of fun making this tree skirt and in fact, I think I'm gonna make a couple more. I really love how it is reminiscent of girly, frilly things and has a very neutral palette to it. That being said, if you use different fabrics, you could get a completely different look and feel to your tree skirt. If you attempt to do this one, I'd love it if you'd tag me on social media at ShareStitchery on Instagram and Facebook. And we also have the hashtag Sheer Stitchery. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up and comment down below. Those really help with the YouTube algorithms. And if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to my channel for sewing and DIY creations. Until next time, makers, let's get our sew spiration on.